Hey everyone, so I am here to answer some questions for a student who is doing a project um, and they needed someone who worked in the death care business to answer and I'm always like, I'll do it. <laughs> so I am here to answer some questions for them and they are going to know who they are, but I know that you guys love to hear answers to questions. So why not just post this as a live video that you can also see instead of keep it hidden in private. So our first question is, what does being a funeral director teach you about life and death? These are some big loaded questions too. Let me, let me, you know, give you that. Um, I think it allows you to really truly see the brevity of any life at any time. You know, there's no bias. There's no judgment from death on who should live, who should die. So anybody can be afflicted by an illness at any time. Anyone can die of an accident at any time. Um, it really gives you a glimpse in that, you know, it's, well, death can happen to anyone at any moment. So, you know, I think in that aspect, you, your mortality is kind of in your face all the time. What are the most common funerary customs? What's one out of the ordinary ones you've seen? Oh, that's, that's a huge question as well, just because, you know, do you mean like when we're at the house, do you mean like during the funeral ceremony? Um, I would say that prayer is something I have seen almost across the board. I have had very few funerals where there's no kind of prayer, moment of silence, reflection moment, thoughts and quiet type thing, uh, that that is pretty custom to a funeral service. So whether it's religious or not, whether we just, you know, say a thanks, whoever you're saying it to, because even if the person that died wasn't religious, other people may be, and they need that prayer moment. So just because the deceased isn't prayerful or isn't religious doesn't mean that you don't have prayer at a funeral. I think that's a big misconception a lot of times. So I often, I would say that's one of the biggest things across the board I, I do see. Out of the ordinary ones I've seen, I don't know if anything's out of the ordinary anymore that we see. There really just isn't. Um, people not attending is, is to me out of the ordinary, you know, like I'm not coming to my loved one's funeral. That's kind of odd. Um, you know, holders, having something tangible that you can hold on to almost out of comfort or a keepsake is completely ordinary. So not having anything like printed material, register books, is kind of out of the ordinary. Um, people even do like frames like you do at a wedding. They do those at the funerals too that you can sign a frame instead of a register book. So something that's more of a keepsake rather than just the register book for families is becoming more ordinary, but it is still kind of a unique thing. Why did I become a funeral director? Um, it was a, it was a part-time job in high school and I tried it and loved it and it fit me. It was something that was just an extension of who I was. I didn't have to play a part. I didn't have to find a passion for it because it was just there and it had grown organically. Um, so you know, that's, that's why I became a funeral director. My favorite part of the job, it's going to depend on the day. Some days I really like just working in quiet in the prep room and working with the deceased and doing restorations and embalming and caring for them and getting them ready and um, doing that part of it. So some days I like that. Some days I like working with the families and getting to know them, getting to know the deceased through their stories and getting to help them in this lost moment of their life. And I enjoy that part as well. So it just depends. Some days I like chatting with the vault guys and the pastors and just cultivating relationships. That's the best part of the job is that there's so many versatile parts of the job. And every day is not going to be the same. I can love something different every day. I can love something different every day of the month. And it may not be the same thing twice. How do you deal with the emotional stress of the job? There's really not as much emotional stress, I feel, as a lot of people think there would be. Obviously, we're going to be stressed um, during the 
um, virus time recently at, added a huge stressor that we couldn't meet families' needs, and our job is to meet families' needs. So that was a huge stress that we couldn't do anything about. Um, we saw people grieving in, in you know, solitude and not being able to help them when we knew what they wanted to do, knew what they needed, knew what path they wanted to be on, and we had to tell them no. So that was really very disconcerting. And I think we'll stick with a lot of funeral directors um, for their whole career. Uh, I try not to get caught up in the, the emotion of it. It's not my loved one. It is their loved one. My job is to care for that family and make sure they have what they need. My job is to care for that deceased and respect them and carry out the wishes of the family for that deceased. So it's not my loss. It's not my pain to carry. It's not mine. And I remind myself of that constantly. So rather than have to have this huge, you know, the therapist and all these things later, I try to catch it up front to stop as much of that from setting into me as possible. Obviously, some things I'm going to carry home, some emotional days, um, some certain funerals are going to stick with you longer. I try and talk them out. I vlog about them, um, you know, just, I don't know, just distraction and, um, you know, quiet. Sometimes I don't want to talk and sometimes I just need a couple days for it to like work out of my system. So I may be quieter. I may just go paint my nails in the corner. I may go to bed early and just watch something or, I'm, you know, just a little bit of solitude. So it just depends how I'm feeling with each situation. How does religion and spirituality play into your job? Um, like I, I, so I have faith. I'm a Christian. You know, I believe in God. I believe in his works here on earth and what he does. And I think in play, you have to believe in a whole and not just a piece. Some of it takes more faith than others. I feel like I can see actions of God here on earth, but I can't see heaven. So it's, some days I'm, I'm like, please give me a sign that there is heaven, that I know that there is something more. That to me is the part of my Christian faith that I question the most is heaven. And so there are days at the funeral home that, you know, I think about that and maybe I question it more or maybe I, I land in faith more that I can only lean into my faith to get me through this situation. I understand that my faith is not the only one and I respect and can appreciate the other faiths I work with, you know, Muslims and Buddhists and they believe in something too. And that is what they lean into when they have a loss. That is their cushion. That is their support. That is their life raft. And I have to respect that and what they are doing. And so I try and support them through their steps as well. Um, personal views and those of others. So that's kind of where that all lands. Um, we encounter all types of religions, all types of situations, all types of beliefs. I may not believe what they believe or I may think it's odd or weird or crazy, but the communication is the biggest part. For me to do my job the best, I need to understand at least partly you know, why you're doing what you're doing and why it's important to you so I can help with that. So if people come in with, you know, a chip on their shoulder and they don't want to connect with you and they don't want to like let you be part of the solution, you can't help them. So communication is the biggest and really like making the funeral director and allowing them to be your teammate during this time because you need that. What does death mean to you? That's an odd question. Um, it means the end of life. It means the end of, you know, what makes your physical being you. Um, what is left is the shell. There's no emotion inside that shell. There's no laughter. There's no personality. There's no thinking. There's no anything. It's just the shell. I, uh, do I believe in an afterlife? I do. Um, I like to think of, you know, that heaven is real. I like to try to believe that it is real. Like I was saying some days, it's more of a belief than others. Um, because I'm such a tactile 
fact person. So I want facts when it comes to things. I, I You want me to believe something, you need to show me that it's real or show me. Um, and faith is that, just that faith. Um, and so you do have to dive in and either be in belief or not believe. Um, but we all struggle. We all struggle with different parts of faith and different parts of um, life and, and death and you know what goes on, but we don't know until it's all said and done here on this earth as to what's going to happen. Ooh, what's my favorite death ritual from any culture or time in history? Um, I think one of the most, I think a family's caring for their own is to me something that always touches me. So if a father is carrying the casket of his child or, you know, a Muslim man is standing down in a hole for the grave and he is lowering his wife in to position her correctly and get her situated. Those are just beautiful moments. And those are things that I think will always touch me and will always mean more than nothing being done and discarding basically your, your loved one with no, never seeing him again, no services, nothing happening. I don't understand that. So to me, I just can't get on board with that. Um, I believe a life deserves honor and respect and a moment to stop for them and something to happen for them and us to care for them. Just because grandma went from breathing to not breathing doesn't make her gross. She is still the hierarchy of the family structure and we should still honor and revere her and care for her after she's died. So I really love the cultures that still care for the elders, bring them into their homes, care for them after they've died, bathe them, wrap them, you know, make it part of them. That can all still be taking place if the person is embalmed and you have viewing and you have burial. It doesn't just have to be a home burial, natural burial sort of thing. You can do that with every situation. So to me, that I would say is probably the most beautiful. Religious or secular, what's the common thread in paying homage and saying goodbye? Is there a shared desire? I think the common thread is just honoring a life um, and planting the seed for the next step for the family and loved ones. You know, part of the service is remembering and also letting go in a way that you are allowing yourself to move forward. Because that next step you take into your own future without that person is an important step. So whether you have a religious base or a non-religious base to what you do in that, that is important to develop within that gathering time and that service time as well. And so I think that that is a big shared desire that you're, you know, giving some peace, giving some support, giving some comfort during that time. You know, if it's religious, they're, you know, pouring spirit into you with words and reassuring you of the promise, you know, of the heaven and everything to come. If it's secular, it's ensuring that you understand there's comfort and there's healing and there's love. And then that's going to be there going forward. So I think those things are shared desired and shared things that are in a lot of services and we hope are in almost every service. What do I want for my own service? I have things that maybe I want, but I keep going back to, it's not my, it's not for me. I mean, my family is going to honor me. I know that they need to do what they need to do though, to move into their next step of their journey and their path. So if it's playing a certain song for them, that's important. So I'm not going to be listening to that song. I'm not there listening to it. They are. If it's a certain person speaking, they need to choose that. If it's a certain type of service, they need to choose that. It's just my shell that's left here. So it is whatever they need moving forward. It's not so much about my desires and what I want for myself. So that's how I feel about that. 
So those are 10 questions. And so hopefully that answers everything for your class. And hopefully you all learned a little more about me and all my thoughts on all these things. Um, but thanks for stopping in guys. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.